Hello to everyone. Uh, I'm so sorry because I prepare this uh, presentation in Russian language, but uh, we'll try to, to do this in English. So if uh, I will uh, stuck or something like this, uh, so sorry guys. Okay, uh, today I will try to, to tell a story, success story about our experience, how we uh, migrate Magento 2 of version 2.1.3 to, to version 2.3.3 without any second of downtime. So, a uh, few words about me. Uh, I am a software engineer, team lead at Ultrino company, uh, working with Magento uh, around eight years. Uh, also participate in, in uh, Magento Extension Challenge 2015, uh, and uh, I'm a winner of this challenge. Uh, also, I coaching in Eltrino Academy, and uh, currently working um, on uh, a big project uh, inside company, and uh, I combine in the roles of uh, engineer, team lead, and a uh, little bit DevOps in a big team. So, uh, first, a uh, few words also about the project. Uh, originally, as I mentioned before, uh, client client uh, come to us and ask to upgrade Magento from one version to next one. Uh, also, project uh, I think is a lot. Uh, we have around uh, five thousand uh, orders per day. And also, we have a big, uh, great team, uh, around 10 developers currently. So that's all about project and about me, and uh, let's uh, go to our topic. Uh, as uh, all of us know, uh, the clients, all, all the clients want to see some perfect picture of all development stuff. And uh, when clients come, come to us, he asked us to upgrade Magento, and uh, he expected uh, to see a fallen picture. When he come to us with Magento 2.1, uh, he wants to receive Magento 2.3, and uh, all process, uh, he see like some magic. So, uh, we uh, expect a little bit different behavior, we uh, has uh, separate uh, all all these processes to two stages. One one is of the stages in development. Uh, it's mean how we expect this. Uh, we choose one of or two developers uh, with good knowledge knowledge of Magento. Uh, then give them task for upgrade. Also we. Uh, the main line of code, so we stop all development and working only on upgrade and uh, waiting for some magic in some time period. Uh, second one uh, stage, it's a release stage. So, uh, what, what we think, how how it will, will, will be in our processes. So we put the side to, to website to the maintenance mode. Uh, do some upgrade, upgrade uh, DB data, uh, upgrade, uh, run upgrade scripts, etc., etc., etc. Convert uh, our data from one DB to another, and uh, so uh, as a result, disable maintenance and go to live with new version of Magenta. But uh, as as we see in the result, this will not work because client. Uh, want to continue and work with in main main line so he want also in parallel do some features do some bug fixes uh, so only one process that we uh, keep uh, of all of, of described this uh, image uh, it's we choose a few developers uh, with good experience with magenta to end ask he is they, they to do upgrade so uh, after some time we uh, client go go went to us and uh, uh, do some and say uh, that she would like to 
uh, do a great without downtimes. Uh, it was uh, without any second of the time of downtimes. Uh, this was unexpectedly from for us, uh, and little bit we was a little bit confused. Also, the second one uh, rule that client asked us to do uh, it's, it's possibility to test new environment, uh, new production environment. Uh, without customers, so only client can visit new website. But this website should contain the real data, data. So products, orders, uh, etc., etc. All data should be uh, real, like on a website which uh, customers visit. Second one rule: it was uh, to possibility. To immediately roll back without them time downtime. If something goes wrong, uh, client, for example, will call us and say, "Guys, it's not working, so let's roll back." E and this uh, feature should be done immediately. Also, there are one uh, point from us was added to this list. It's uh, because we are a hello project, we want to uh, to increase traffic on a new environment environment uh, step by step. So, uh, for example, at the start, we uh, we pass only client or QAs to the new website. After some time, we uh, increase the percent of people who can see a new site, for example, for 10%, uh, then 20%, and so on. Uh, after, some, um, after some discussion, we uh, got the main idea how we can do this. So, uh, first point, it's a create a copy of content infrastructure and uh, put a new version of Magento 2 to, to, to the, into this infrastructure. So in result, we will have two uh, versions of Magento. Okay. Uh, so we also will use two different databases for, for this because, uh, okay, I will describe this point a little bit later on, on the next slides. Uh, e and uh, also we need to find a trick uh, how we can split customers between uh, between these two versions of website and how to manage this whole stuff. After, when, when we uh, got an idea and say that we have idea but we need time, time to resolve some uh, issues uh, that appear for us. Uh, first, uh, uh, we group uh, these issues by two group. Uh, one group is the routing issues that uh, one of them uh, as customer want to see real data on real website. Uh, the first issue uh, will uh, looks like we need must have one domain name but uh, by some uh, logic split clients uh, to the different websites. Uh, also, next one, how to pass a percentage of user to a new website, how we can manage this, how we can uh, configure it. Uh, next one problem, uh, user who pass to a new website should uh, stay on this website. So uh, it's important because uh, when user will we will also plan to have separate uh, sessions for two environments. So when user come to the new website, add a decent product to basket, uh, then go to another page, and if it will appear on the old website, he will lost uh, the basket. So it's important issue too. Uh, and uh, the last one is how we can pass team. Uh, QA engineers, uh, clients uh, uh, to new website, how we can skip uh, 
some kind of randomizing this process. Uh, second uh, group of issues is uh, the base issues. So, as I mentioned before, we uh, in Magento 2.1 and 2.3 have a di different data structures. Uh, for example, some uh, data in the database in Magento 2.1 was in uh, serialized data format, and uh, also in Magento 2.3 uh, it became to be JSON. It was a little bit uh, problem for us, so we'll discuss this a little bit later. Uh, also, previous problem with data, uh, proceed new one, uh, data synchronization between versions. Uh, so we decide to, we can't use a one database. It should be uh, two different database for, for this stuff. Sorry, one moment. And we uh, should uh, detect what data we should synchronize up, synchronize, and uh, how how it will be. Uh, and the last one problem with database it's uh, integration. We have a lot of integration with some like uh, order export, product import, uh, etc. So we need to uh, choose what system will be uh, the main for this integration. Okay, let's uh, discuss uh, first group of, group of issues. It's uh, routing issues. Um, and uh, before we continue, I would like to describe uh, how it looks like uh, our infra infrastructure is. So uh, we have uh, some traffic. Traffic um, become to us uh, from uh, Cloudflare CDN and uh, split it by round robin uh, DNS uh, method to two load balancers. Uh, these load balancers uh, have installed Nginx uh, for SSL termination and uh, offloading, uh, and then uh, pass th they pass traffic to Varnish, webs uh, varnish and Varnish uh, do also do round robin uh, load balancing to front application nodes. It's uh, servers where Magento installed and working. So also we have a Redis cluster at that moment, uh, and also some big databases that used for, for, to, uh, for, for, for this stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, let's... Uh, Look to the first problem that we have: one domain name, two different websites. Um, uh, after some brainstorm, we decide that we can't uh, use a, an, just a day an additional IP address to DNS because uh, we will uh, receive uh, unregulated traffic. So we can can't manage this and can't uh, do all required. Uh, rules that was uh, described by the client. So uh, we need to manipulate uh, with the traffic inside our infrastructure. It was a decision. Uh, we need to uh, to level of load balancing. So our infrastructure, after some uh, investigation, will looks like following: we have a traffic. Traffic goes to uh, load balancers too that we, uh, I will call a group of application A. This load balancer uh, looking for some information how to split traffic and uh, also redirect some traffic to application B. And uh, um, in generally all uh, load balancers will uh, pass uh, traffic to uh, Backend nodes uh, with uh, version of Magento that was required in application A to nodes with Magento 2.1, application B to Magento with uh, 2.3. Okay, so uh, 
let's talk about a little bit about uh, upstreams in engineering configuration. Uh, and the uh, first time we had uh, configuration like this, so there are described describe upstream directive of application A, uh, A that uh, uh, points to uh, server with following IP and port. Uh, port uh, it's used for varnish. So uh, we change this configuration to the following. Uh, we added that application B upstream and describe a uh, different server. It will be our third load balancer. Okay, uh, so step two it's uh, we need to split clients between these two upstreams. Uh, for this, Nginx uh, have a model called uh, HTTP split clients that allows to do a B testing. So we choose this, this model and I will describe how it works. So we can describe the uh, directive split clients where we should pass one parameter, we call it uh, currently msec. Uh, and uh, all magic uh, 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 works inside uh, this block. Uh, we had uh, two uh, rules. First rule say to engines that we should uh, pass uh, most traffic to application B uh, and all that uh, 10% 10, 10 to application B. Uh, when we pass uh, msec uh, parameter, uh, engines uh, in backend create a big uh, hash table, for example, uh, I don't remember how much it, how much, uh, but uh, uh, there are around uh, four millions uh, rows in this hash table, uh, and the jinx um, each row uh, map to these two variables: application A and application B. Uh, Sorry. Um, as a result, this uh, directive spot clients return us uh, apps upstream variable that will contain uh, up, uh, web value of application A or application B in the uh, present that we describe it in this method. Uh, and as a result, we can use uh, this uh, variable inside uh, location directive of Nginx. Uh, split it by uh, percentage that we uh, describe above. The second problem that we had is sticky session. We need to remember clients uh, on which website he, he was passed and uh, use this website for this client in the future. Uh, my why is important. I was described previously, uh, so we need to choose uh, some unique uh, characteristic or parameter that will be unique for for all users, and also this uh, parameter should be available in inside HTTP request. Uh, after some br some brainstorming, we uh, decide that this. We already have this parameter, uh, and uh, it uh, it is a PHP SSID uh, cookie. So, Nginx uh, can access to cookies variables. Uh, in this case, uh, it's PHP SSID. So, we change the split clients directive to the following: we use uh, cookie PHP SSID as uh, parameter for Jinx to split clients and uh, it will work uh, for each client will return uh, this directive will return for 
current some clients the stable result explained from customer uh, refresh the page uh, PHP SSID is the same and ranging will return application R application base that was uh, set it previously so it will be always the same uh, okay uh, next uh, question that we have uh, it's how to pass a QA team or dev team to the new website so we also can use the cookie so we created a two pages uh, for example enable enable upgrade html and disable upgrade html and uh, there are uh, by some not, even, not by some methods set the cookies it's php or javascript it's not uh, important uh, as a result, our uh, engine configuration become to be like this. So we have two upstreams described in the servers uh, that points to a different version of uh, Magento. Uh, we have split clients directive that points uh, randomly by PHP SSID clients to the different versions. And also we have added the map function to engine configuration that receive uh, Cookie, uh, cookie upgrade that we set on sp special pages and uh, return a uh, new version of uh, return to variable new, new upstream, uh, new, new version of upstream. And uh, in other case, if, uh, if upgrade cookie not set it, it will be returned, uh, uh, it will pass logic to split clients directive. So split clients will be used instead of map function. Okay, second group of problems, it's a database problem. We need to, uh, we need to sp split data into two database and we need uh, s some method to synchronize data between uh, between these database because uh, as I mentioned before we uh, have different data types inside uh, Magento, between Magento 1 and 2 1 and uh, 2 3 uh, for example serialized data in Magento 2 1 and uh, JSON uh, inside Magento 2 3 uh, new data structure of third party models uh, when we upgrade it to a new version of Magento, we also need to upgrade also party models. And uh, some of models have a new data structure, a new tables, new schema. So we can't use uh, also new attribute source models, like uh, in database, it describe it like uh, one by, by one class, uh, but in code it will have a new class. So yeah, we understand that we can't use uh, one DB for two application instance. So we uh, going to the next problem. It's data synchronization between databases. Uh, and uh, first, what we should do uh, point it's what data should be synced. Because Magenta have, have a lot of that data, uh, there are like orders. Yeah, I think it's most important uh, part of data in all websites because uh, if we lost products, we can uh, restore it. If we lost orders, we lost the clients of the website. So orders is the main uh, thing that should be synchronized between two databases. Inventory, it's also important for client. Uh, Customers, uh, yeah, important uh, invoices, also shipments uh, and catalog. It's products, categories, etc. Uh, but uh, in our case, we um, we have uh, sorry. In our case. Uh, it was easiest for us because uh, we have disabled customer models for some reasons. Uh, in that period of upgrade, we uh, don't use invoices, we don't use shipments, 
and we ask uh, business to not do not use uh, in period of upgrade do not use import of uh, products categories etc et uh, so as a result we need to think only two uh, items uh, its orders and inventory uh, Next one question that we uh, had, uh, it's what sh system should be the source and uh, what is destination? Uh, as as we, we had the decision that uh, we will keep uh, a new database as main in the future, af future af after upgrade. So we need to synchronize data from old, web old website to new website. It's clear, I think. Uh, and uh, the question what we should do with auto increments and the increment ID in case of uh, orders table. Uh, so it's very simple. We will just uh, increase uh, increments in new database, for example, for one million records. And uh, in, in this case, our uh, increments will not uh, cross it. So, uh, order synchronization. Uh, all of us uh, know and use uh, such thing as such method as get connection, but not all know that uh, there are also present another one that call it uh, get connection by name. So we trying to do this synchronization uh, easiest. So we. Uh, think to write some model from Magento 2.1 that will uh, use the two different connection to database. It's uh, internal database and external with a new version. So all that we need to take data from uh, one tables, uh, do some apply some rules, condition, uh, modification of data, and uh, save it to external database. Mm. Uh, this can be done by cron job, for example, in one time per minute. So it's a magic. Inventory synchronization. Uh, with inventory, we uh, go to do much easiest uh, because uh, in inventory in Magento, it's not the final version. Final version of inventory always uh, stores on warehouse. So also we have an import of inventory to Magento, for example, around uh, uh, one per hour. So we mm, decide to use a more simplest method for, oh, uh, for import inventory. In result, it was like simple MySQL dump uh, from one database uh, to another. In this case also um, was good that uh, table, inventory table, cases have the same structure in the uh, old Magento version, version and in new Magento version. So uh, about integration few words. Um, we use uh, many a lot of integrations uh, such uh, Order export, uh, product import, uh, stock import, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we decide to all to, to move all incoming incoming API uh, to the new version of application by Nginx rules. So we just uh, use Nginx to configure that uh, all requests that uh, points to uh, V1 rest, uh, for example, import stock will go to new version of Magento. Uh, all outgoing integration was disabled on old environment and enabled on the new one. Um, also, I ca can say that uh, we had some problems uh, that was not expected for us, uh, some problems with integration, such like last like uh, payment integrations, and uh, these problems was uh, resolving by, by us in the real time when the real customers was online and 
So we know the gods and can't uh, uh, can't I don't know how to choose the world. We can't uh, know what all that could happen with us. So in the result, uh, I would, would like to summary. Uh, we have fully migrated to a new version of Magento in about a week. Uh, it was uh, step by step. So firstly, we pass uh, QA team to a new website by the method described in this, uh, um, in this meeting. Uh, we, uh, after that, when the QA team says it all okay, it looks like uh, we pass 10% uh, of uh, real people to the new website. And when we see that all looks okay, we every day increase this uh, percentage to uh, and goes to 100. Uh, yeah, just say about this. And also, I say about uh, that we had a problems and that was unexpected by, the, by us, but uh, it was not so hard to resolve it. I think that's all from, from my side. Sorry for my English, guys. I don't know. Uh, no no need something. to sorry, Vladimir. Thank you for your presentation. We've actually reached the presentation time and uh, have three minutes for the Q&A session. Hopefully, you have your colleague, uh, Taras, which most likely sharing the pain with you. So he was answering most of the questions in the chat itself. But it also means that we won't see them in the recording. So uh, first of all, Dan asks if, uh, if the NGINX config and the architecture will be available somewhere for the study cases. So our attendees will be able to, to try your solutions by their own. Yeah, I believe uh, the video will be shared, yes, on YouTube. Uh, also, I can you can uh, send me a message. I will share this or, or, or put my presentation somewhere and like share. Thank you. So the question from the terrace, which is most likely in the name of the presentation, but what was the main justification for running both versions of Magento at once at the same time? Mm. Uh, sorry, what was the main issue? The main, the main reason words. why you had both versions ah. of uh, the main reason. Uh, because uh, we uh, there were two, two reasons. First one is uh, we need to uh, migrate without any downtime. So the faster way to do this is just switch uh, traffic from, from one server to another one. Because uh, we when, when we prepare for upgrade, we write, wrote uh, a lot of uh, scripts, uh, data migration scripts. Uh, so the process for migrate database from one version to another one can took about four hours, uh, in minimum, I think. Uh, another reason uh, that database uh, have different, uh, different schemas and uh, can be used at once for, for both applications. I don't know it's clear or not. Yeah, thank you. The, the addition to this, so then asks that this can be used as a normal working process uh, for the zero down, downtime deployments, etc. Uh, and it was just a custom solution for now, which allowed customers to use the old version while uh, you were slightly switching to the new one. Is that correct? Um, yeah, it's a custom solution, uh, but it uh, based on uh, 
method of uh, a b testing so uh, we uh, can use uh, zero less don't don't deployment for this but uh, the data structure in database is so different so we um, we can't use this without no time. There are a lot of process, processes of uh, modification data. For example, we had uh, in uh, order stable around 1 million records. And uh, if we will try to run uh, alter table, it will local uh, database and we will receive uh, no time for some time. Yeah. And there are uh, these uh, small things was very a lot of such small things that we that in summary increase uh, downtime time for changing uh, database schema. Okay, thank you, Volodymyr. Thank to thank you, you all for joining this session and all of your questions. The presentation is in recorded and will be available on YouTube after the event. In case you didn't get the answer to your question, feel free to reach out to speaker during the networking time at the chat rooms. Now uh, we have 33 minutes uh, for the break during which we encourage you to visit our sponsor expo booth and learn more about the companies and their recruitment opportunities, as well as join the chat rooms to connect with your Magento fellows and have a deep dive into Magenta conferences.